Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on the Flash, Supergirl, Arrow, and Legends. We're going to be talking about the Crisis on Infinite Earths crossover, talking about all the ending scenes and how they tease Crisis. So we're going to be breaking it down, talking about what the individual scenes from each episode all mean, and we're going to like sort of bunch it together and sort of paint a picture as to what to expect. Okay, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos over the summer. I will be at MCM London Comic Con in just a few days time on Friday, Saturday and Sunday. So follow me on Twitter to stay up to date with me at the DC TV show to know when I'm there. Also, I'll be at San Diego Comic Con this very summer. So Melissa will be there, Grant will be there, and everyone, and I'll be at the panels. So if you guys do plan on going, be sure to say hi to me when I am there and if you see me. So let's go ahead and get right into this video. So now we've had all the finales for the Arrowverse. So it's completely done, and we're going to be going back to shooting sometime early in July, late June, depending on what show it is. I think Supergirl's coming back a little bit earlier than The Flash and the other shows and Legends we're not too sure right now because Legends isn't coming back until the mid season so it's going to be quite a while so I reckon Legends will start shooting around probably September time I would hazard the guess and so first off let's talk about The Flash so The Flash ended season 5 in a cliffhanger and this cliffhanger was the only cliffhanger of the episode there wasn't any sort of other things to tease say what the villain's going to be next season like Supergirl did this season I think maybe the Flash missed out on that I would have liked that but anyway so we got this post credit scene where we see the time vault it lights up and Gideon is there and a time flux happens Gideon says and we see it change and the date is changing and so basically what's happening is this crisis newspaper that we've seen for many years and had been a massive focus this season because, you know, Nora's whole journey was to erase this and make sure Barry doesn't vanish or die in the crisis. And so it's been heavily focused upon. It's always been 2024. There's been changes with Flashpoint, like, you know, various iterations where the text has changed, the picture has changed and so on. So what happens this time is the date changes, it begins to slide down, it's quite a cool effect and you see it move back from 2024 to like 2023, 2021 and then finally to 2019 where it zooms in and it doesn't actually show any information but before that none of the text was changed, it was still the new text with Psycho Pirate being mentioned and also Batwoman and it's obviously just different. So with it zooming in potentially with it being in 2019 they can 100% change it because they didn't show the text when it switched to 2019 so that's not to say that it's not going to be exactly the same as that I reckon they will take some liberties and they can justify that with them zooming in just on 2019 because it doesn't give away any details apart from the time so also they didn't show any specific date in 2019 so that gives them the ability to date it at any point they want in 2019 so so when we get the official announcement of the specific dates that Crisis is going to air I think it's going to be pretty similar however they've announced they're doing a five night crossover but it's going to be in different parts two quarters as they say and by quarters they mean sort of two halves what they mean is like two different quarters of the year because Americans say quarters but it's just, you know all the different seasons autumn winter spring and summer so it's going to be the last part of winter which is december and then into the next quarter which is technically spring but it's still winter so it's really one quarter but whatever we'll deal with that that's a just a way of wording it for their publicity so that's very interesting i love that i love the idea that we have the three episodes say supergirl the flash and arrow don't know if that's confirmed yet but I presume it's going to be them first and then we have the break and we're left on a cliffhanger at the end of the third episode and we're like how the hell is this going to end and we go into the back half of the crossover in January when the shows return and that's where we get the finale of the crossover and I think it gives them a bit more time to finish and edit and make the CGI look really good and so on because this is going to be massive it's a massive deal 
And last year we only had a three night crossover, now a five night, you know, before we had a four night. So this is the biggest crossover yet, and this is the biggest storyline they've tackled. So super looking forward to it. I can't wait to see like our official looks at the Anti-Monitor, find out what other heroes and villains are going to be in this crossover. So anyway, let's get back onto the Flash. So we see the timeline change, and this is due to the iteration of the Flash we're seeing right now with the season actually having these big line timeline changes due to Cicada and Thorn and his manipulation. So he's the root cause of it coming into 2019. Okay, so let's move on and we're going to talk about Arrow Season 7. So it ends, we see Oliver's grave in 2019 where it said Beloved Son, Brother, Husband and Father, Hero of Star City, the Green Arrow and you see Felicity and this is in the finale of Arrow and as you know, Arrow is going to be ending next season so many people have sort of presumed that he's going to die and in regards to what it teases yes Green Arrow does die because we see the grave and what was said in the finale in that final scene is I can't prevent his passing but he can prevent the deaths of countless more including you and your daughter and with this flashback the official death date of Oliver is 2019 so obviously we can infer from that yes he's gonna die in crisis this year because he's destined to die unless the timeline changes and the deal with the monitor is changed Oliver will die in crisis so that's what it teases and what it sets up and at the end of the scene at the end of the finale the monitor appears with a future version of Felicity offering to take her to where Oliver is and Felicity goes into this portal and she sort of embraces whatever is going to happen we presume this is going to be taking her to the afterlife or you know to another dimension perhaps because this is the monitor we're talking about so it's left in arms as to what's happened to Felicity. I expect Felicity to return for the series finale, which may be Crisis. We haven't confirmed that yet, but Felicity's not going to return for the next season of Arrow, but I think she will return for the finale, so I wouldn't be too worried about that. And so Supergirl. So Supergirl ended just yesterday, and it was such a great ending. It teased so much about season five and what's to come, but in regards to Crisis, what happens is the monitor appears and he actually gets out the brother of Jean Jones and you have to realize this everything that the monitor has been doing in the crossover and everything even though he may seem evil he's not evil he's doing it all with the expectation to try and prepare the earth for the incoming crisis to do with the anti-monitor so whatever his meaning for bringing Jean Jones's brother Malafaic, or however you say his name in the comics. It seems like it is perhaps a tester for Jean and Team Supergirl to see how strong they are in actually defeating a menace such as Malafaic and obviously preparing them to move forward into crisis. And so then he moves on and he teleports to where Lex Luthor, his dead body is. So he transports there, I believe it's in Kaznir actually, and so he's dead as you saw at the end of the last episode where Lena shot him twice in the chest so he dies and then the monitor shows up through his teleportation and he stands in front of his body and he sort of twirls his hand and you see some blue energy that he does actually twirling out of his hand so the implication here is that he's resurrecting Lex and Lex is going to play some sort of big role in the plans heading towards Crisis and this may see the return of John Cryer as Lex Luthor as many of us fans would really like to see. I would love to see him again and in the comics Lex does actually play a role in Crisis. He has his own sort of little team that he creates so they can try and stop the Anti-Monitor so he does have a sort of anti-hero stance in Crisis so I reckon he's going to do that again in this version of Crisis and so Moving on to Legends, so Legends wrapped up last night and the final scene was of him standing in the crowd at the Superheroes vs Monsters show and he didn't look very much so pleased about it and so he's just sort of standing there, sitting there and he just looks upon it and it doesn't seem like this is very crucial as to what's going to happen to Crisis, like what's going to happen in Crisis specifically, but I think it's just the signifier and it symbolizes 
that he is watching them and they're going to be involved basically I think is what we're supposed to take away from it that yeah the legends although they're not going to come back to the mid-season are going to play a role and here is our teaser we're putting the monitor inside the end of season four for legends so that is about it for this video so if you did enjoy this video please be sure to leave a like and a comment subscribe turn on notifications Please be sure to say hi to me at MZM London Comic Con or at San Diego Comic Con this summer. And yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.